Who wants to play Bodies, Bodies, Bodies? Probably the smartest horror movie you'll see all year. So impressive. Just throwing out real, real buzz buzzword lines. Uh, so that's now the headline. You the, didn't smartest, the smartest uh, slasher you'll see all year. Dude, I've, I was just, last five minutes, I've been pro as fuck. You are not wrong. I do like, though, that you said that, like, oh, once the reveal happens, like, it happens very quickly in the movie. You're like, once that happens, you're in. The reveal happens, like, in the last two minutes of the movie. So you are sitting with the stupidity for quite a long time. It is marinating for about 90 minutes. But you don't know. You don't know, though, if it's stupid. You you oh, know, you, like, this is. Oh, you know it's stupid, but you don't know if it's intentionally stupid. Right. So did you like it? Uh, I did like it, but I didn't love it. It's a very unique and current take on slashers, and I really enjoyed what it was trying to do. I don't think it was perfect in its execution. I think that like maybe a more experienced... I don't know like what the experience of the director is. First time directing okay. an English movie. Okay, so I would say like a more experienced director would maybe be able to have a tighter product... But it was really enjoyable. Yeah, it's for sure heavy handed in its commentary mm -hmm. on kids these days. So essentially, these rich kids are playing a party game in their rich friend's mansion and the lights go out. Somebody dies. It's a hurricane party. It's a hurricane party, famously. And they're bored in the house. Bored you know in the house. They were bored. bored in the house. Bored in the house. Bored. As uh, our friend Tyga tells them throughout the 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 movie they're doing tiktok dances and the big song they kept keep doing is bored in the house i've listened to that song a hundred times since by the to way to be fair though like they were never bored in the house they were always doing shit they in were the house. mainly concerned with how are these people dying who's kill <laughs> who's the killer why does everybody keep dying yeah i mean there was never a point in the movie where they seemed bored at all because for the like the first however many minutes they're just doing every drug. They're doing every drug. They're drinking like crazy. Drinking they are fish. they are rich kids that are partying like very rich kids. And then people start dying and they're trying to figure out who is dying or in like and, and, and <laughs> they, they know who's dying. They're they're trying to figure out like who the killer is. No, they're trying to figure out who's dying. Oh, like what? Like when some like who's next? Then, yeah, like, what, yeah. Okay, what's the rhyme or reason? Because there's like a a final there's like a final destination maybe theory conspiracy going on at, at some point. The, the party game they're playing is like a, somebody's the quote unquote killer, mm -hmm. and they're trying to follow. All right, so if this person died in real life, does this mean this person's going to die? And as I said, it's definitely a commentary on kids these days, but it's interesting to see if you drop kids these days in a traditional kind of horror movie setting and that premise of they're playing a party game, but suddenly things get deadly. That could happen in the 70s. That yeah. could happen in the 80s. That could happen in the 90s. They're dropping the most 2022 <laughs> hyper Twitterized it's, podcast yeah. enriched kids into that setting and to say hijinks ensues is to sell it short because all of it none of it seems how do you do fellow kids and none no of it seems, no get no. off my lawn no none of it seems it, maga it, it if they like focus grouped it and they went through like here's everything we want for, for to like represent gen z they hit every checkbox like they had like like cringy woke speak they had yeah. <laughs> uh they had um like tiktok dances they had um depression references and like xanax yeah. uh references like they're all they're doing all kinds like of cocaine, drugs yeah. yeah uh they they doing uh there was like one of the girls had a podcast um oh, yeah. it, there's a lot of uh, a lot of gen z shit in this and none of it well, like some of it does feel forced, but forced in the way that it would be forced by Gen Z. That they would force yes, it in yeah. there. And that's not to that. I'm not judging Gen Z. I don't even know what fucking generation I am anymore. But uh, you mentioned one of them has a podcast. That is the character. I believe Alice is the name of the character yeah. portrayed by Rachel Sennett, of whom I had never heard before. This. She was great in this. Movie. And she stole the show. She was great in this. movie. She was awesome. And she has one of the 
she has possibly the best line of the movie, uh, which it shouldn't be funny, but as they're dealing with some like really heavy stuff and dealing with different things and trying to figure out like life and death stakes, she says, uh, I've never told anybody this, but I have body dysmorphia. <laughs> and the context the context in which she yeah, says the context that is important there because like very funny. In a, like in a vacuum obviously that's not funny but uh the memes that have spurned from that i if you follow her on instagram uh she's been sharing hilarious memes people have been making my favorite one it's the uh couples dancing meme oh they don't know i have body it is really <laughs> just like a horrible picture of her just dropped on but they don't know i have body dysmorphia That's amazing. which again like when i say it's a smart movie if if you make that line funny in 2022 yeah. i mean there are something there are a lot of like there are a lot of very funny lines and you know who else is very good in this movie pete davidson pete davidson is yes. very good in this Famously movie not good in a lot of stuff but I'm happy for him. Here's the thing. And like we've we spent a lot of time and a lot of energy trying to figure out Pete Davidson's deal. And like, <laughs> is he overrated? Is he even funny? Pete Davidson is at his best in movies. Like it's it's a thousand percent. It's way above anything else that he does. Way better than Saturday Night Live. It's way better than his stand up. And like just I, I think like Pete Davidson is a funny actor and he is a good actor. You know what? Pete Davidson should be doing the John Bernthal thing. We're just, just like, like showing like up for five minutes in the movies. The seventh lead in, because I would say he's probably like the fourth or fifth lead in this movie. And this is a movie not full of A-listers, a lot of up and comers. He's uh, the biggest person in this movie. Yeah, he's got to be the most famous person. Yeah. In this. I mean, although unfortunately he could be in a movie with like, with like John Travolta right now and Pete Davidson would be the most famous person because he's just a celebrity. Um, Maria Bakalova is famously uh, in Borat, subsequent movie film, where she had a weird interaction with Rudy Giuliani. Okay, okay. You know she's that person? No. Have you seen the Borat subsequent movie I have film? not, no. I saw the first Borat once. Those movies aren't for me. Yeah, I think that I've that ship has sailed in my life, me, want, me wanting to watch that. Um, yeah, I mean, like, this movie, it, you've probably figured it out by now, but, like, this movie just features the worst people. Yeah. And it's which is not a shock uh for a slasher because usually slashers part of the formula is including some really terrible people that you are slightly rooting yeah, to like, see die. This one's got to go. This one's got to go. Yeah. And a fun little thing is to just make all of the characters that so that you're kind of just like left rooting for nobody. I feel like that's happened more often the last few years, though, where definitely they peel away. We were talking uh, off the air about this, where like really starting with Get Out, where the final girl is like the bad guy, mm -hmm. where the, the final girl thing is more or less over. Yeah. So the obvious, OK, well, this person is clearly going to be the last one standing. I had no idea who's going to be the last one standing because there is some unreliability to well this person seems like they're the good person but i don't know they they're killing people every five minutes or like locking people out and leaving them to die well so. they're all the worst and they're all fucking unhinged so trying to like whittle it down and to who, young. yeah right so it's like so they're automatically the process shitty. of elimination is very difficult because it's like oh this person is also shitty. So uh, it, talking about the, the final girl phenomena uh, the other day, we kind of came to the conclusion that bec maybe because of societal shifts recently that like the final girl phenomenon has shifted into the final guy phenomenon because like now the, uh, everybody's consensus is like, yeah, guys are really shitty and like the worst and and a lot of a twist we'll have a guy live <laughs> yeah. it based more or less yeah and, and like now it's uh like the the guys in like these these newer movies are like okay they have to prove themselves to not be like the worst and once they do that maybe they'll live i pretty much every character in this movie though is is the really worst. fighting to prove that i mean it's it's not hard to be the worst to not be the worst in this because just don't be as bad as everybody else, but 
Tell you what, they they have a tough time. Pete Davidson, Pete Davidson's character is really intriguing because he is simultaneously the worst, but also maybe the best. Yeah, because he his uh, he plays both sides of the fence for sure. And I mean, his thing is they don't tell us a lot about a lot of the characters. So with Pete Davidson, you get what his deal is right away. Okay, like he's extremely jealous. He's probably dated uh, other people in this friend group. It's his dad's house. He's freaking out about whatever. Some of the other characters are just kind of portrayed as, well, they're house guests and they're partying. They're having a good time. And because it's a horror movie, you don't really ask questions because, as you said, like most characters in horror movies are fodder to be killed so you're like okay well whatever that character might die in a few minutes anyway but they don't fall off too quickly a lot of them last a while and it's enough for them to have these insane arguments and be horrible to each other but i liked it i was uh i'm I'm on letterboxd and i was thinking okay this is probably gonna end up somewhere in the like maybe three, three and a half. Yeah, I, uh, I put it at three. Type uh, range. I ended up giving it four and a half. That's crazy. 